It's a beautiful day today, and it's about mid-morning. We have a little bit of a late start because you had to drive up from Kamloops, but we're at Douglas Lake Ranch today, and it's been years since we've actually fished at Mini Lake. Every time we come up, we always fish Stony Lake, but it's been pretty good in yeah. the past. Oh yeah, Stony is good. But Mini, how long? Oh, years. You years. and Grant, I think. Yeah, I think 15, 15 years, years ago at least. So, you know, we expect some bigger fish in Mini Lake. They get up to eight pounds, and it's perfect time of year. It's late May, chronomans are coming off, they're after leeches, Anything I think will work. So it's all about Mini Lake today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by High Drift Boats, built for fishermen by fishermen. Mountain Valley Sports Fishing and Tours, guiding, done local, done right. Ross Reels, made on the water. And Fly Fusion Magazine, North America's Fly Fishing Authority. So a critical tool when you show up at a lake is the depth sounder. And it's not only a depth sounder, it also gives you water temperature and it gives you a side view. So it actually looks out towards the shoreline to see where the fish are moving. It's a great new tool that we use when we're scouting a lake. Normally we show up, try to find the shoals, try to find uh, you know an area that's 10 feet deep. We put our, our line down, or our anchor system down, try to get a depth. But this tells us everything. It gives us the depth, where the fish are, and as soon as we start spotting fish, we're probably going to anchor in that area if it's anywhere from 5 up to 15 feet, and we're going to work it. So what do you got? 10 feet. 10 feet. Any fish or anything yeah. showing? Yeah. Already going over some fish. Are you? Yeah. Because this looks like a real nice point to work. Right off the point. I think. Oh, it drops off here a little bit too. Yeah. Okay. Well, anywhere out here, we can drop anchor. We've got a beautiful riffle right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is great, are, yeah, 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 we got fish marking. So, you know, they could be swimming in that right there, four to six feet. Out here we can fish probably 10 to 12 feet. It's perfect. All right, I'll put her down. Put her down. A <laughs> little guy, as soon as we got out here. Hey, first cast yeah. with that uh, out here, well, 13 feet where we just moved. I know there's bigger fish in here. <laughs> there's definitely, you can see them on the screen. Way bigger screens. fish in here. Well, that's a good way to start. It didn't even, wasn't even big enough to pop my indicator. There's my indicators popped. Get them up. I'm just gonna unbutton them. I never like to touch the fish really too much. If you can, try not to hurt them at all. Just if you can without. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You always get a shower, but I should just be able to grab the fly. There he goes. Gone. Just unbutton them. A good start. Yeah, well, once we got out to this depth, eh? And they hit the weird pattern. The weird pattern. The funny pattern. I'll show everybody later. It's a funny pattern. Oh, that, could, that could be a better that's fish. That's a bigger fish. Oh, yeah, that's big. That's a bigger fish for sure. What was that guy on? Um, the seal bugger. The seal bugger, yeah, because yeah. you went through oh. a few of your faves and they didn't hit yeah. it. Oh. Oh. Well, that was a nice, fat, chunky fish. It was. Too bad. But everything's just kind of grabbing at the tail, aren't they? Yeah, well, it's just starting, right? They're just... Yeah nibbling at it and but looks like a damsel fly or whatever i think there was a few of those around and yeah there's some damsels there's some mayflies just starting to come off and that's what i found too whenever i get a good wind coming off and my fly picks up a little bit of speed i'm starting to get the hit so they want it you know what it's funny they want it moving but real slowly so slow moving yeah it was just kind of that was big fish though that was a nice slab well you know right away when they pull that hard <laughs> okay i got my little fresky riffle back I don't like it, man. I lost the riffle. You know, whenever we lose that little, what we call the fresky riffle, I love that riffle because it 
when especially indicators because it allows my indicator to keep moving. I give it a little twitch once in a while and it, it actually wind drifts for me. Whenever you have static conditions like this where it's just dead calm, probably the preferred method is what Dale has, a clear intermediate sink, something to get you down a little bit of depth, you know, six, eight feet, and then at least you can work a fly. So I think after this cast, if I get nothing, I might have to change. Because it's going to be one of those days, isn't it, where, yeah, you know, we get a little nice wind and then we don't. And a little wind, a nice sun, calm yeah. wind. Yeah, well. Fish on! Yeah, they like the little... I've been pecking at it enough. Of course, this is the little guy. The big guy won't stay stuck. <laughs> but the seal bugger has always been a good pattern. Gee, this is kind of a rare sight. We're both using the same kind of line. Yeah, I think not that's the first. that happens. <laughs> I thought it would be both of us indicator fishing. But well, later on, later, you know, we've, yeah. we found that this lake is great for sinking chronum is down at 20, 25 feet because this, at this time of year, the coronamids all start piling up down below and you know right when they hatch out of the bloodworm stage and they just sit there and you know in that bottom foot layer and they just all they don't move up yet they just all sit there wiggling around and not moving up so it's always a good time of year to try get into that water well, it's a lot of fun too so we may head in the bay and try that after or even go to 20 feet and see well you know what i'm going to look down here there's kind of seems to be the bite is off or it may have moved. Let's take a look. Man, and I just changed over to the indicator because I had a riffle. No, it just dies again, and there's coronamids coming off. So I know there's going to be a hatch start soon. Stick this down in there, my little hummingbird. Hmm. Where did they go? Huh. Well, we may have to go deeper, or we may have to go up in that bay. Yeah, one of the two, because they're not here anymore. Certainly not marking anything like we were. Hence, we're not catching any. Yeah. <laughs> Could be why. Could be why. And you marked them, and we the got them. There, and you got them. And I went back to my, I went back to my crazy pattern. Oh, did you? Yep. And you got them. Well, because it was hooking fish before, and I didn't. Yeah. And you know, all it is is my prince nymph. So it's just a, you know, again, it's a prince nymph with a real short, short little black tail, and I keep everything short, keep it, keep it compact. Oh no, you got an anchor rope down there, don't you? Oh yeah. And. Again, multiple colors. It's the, it's the light bright colors that I use to tie with. And it's just a brilliant pattern. It works everywhere. It's almost it's almost like the bulldog, you know? It's yeah, got those it's colors got... that it just, oh no, and I lost them. Oh no, I didn't oh, lose them. <laughs> this guy's tough, he's hot. Funny how he's we had nothing fish. too, right? No, no bites, nothing. And then as soon as the fish showed up on the screen, we caught them. We caught them. Well, that's, that's what you said. You so said, I, I see three over here in the <laughs> cast over there, and that's where yeah. I caught them. Wow. That's exactly it. But that goes to show you how necessary, you know, having a fish finder is really. Oh, it's critical. Like, like Brian really. Chan always says, he should, says, it's so valuable, you should take it to bed and put it under your pillow at night. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a great line. Well, I'm definitely going uh, gonna to have to net this guy. Yeah. Because I don't want to lose that fly. Just Look at the fight. Corner. He's not Dude, that yeah, big, but what big, a scrap. A scrap. Yeah. Just chrome little bullet. Oh, beautiful fish. Wow. A little chunkster. Oh, wow. Look at him. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. There he goes. Nice and bright, but yeah. he really went ballistic, too, after oh, yeah. he hit it. And if they're going to wiggle out of your hand like that, just let them go. Wow. Well, that was the first cast after you spotted fish. So <laughs> why, like don't you just, why don't you just stay on that, move it around. You can sit there and tell me where <laughs> the fish are, and I'll catch them. <laughs> How's about that? I don't think so. Ooh. It's clean again now. Nothing. Fish are hitting my little guy. Maybe I should put mine on a strike indicator. Try it stagnant. What do you think? <laughs> stagnant. The, old, uh, <laughs> the comatose leech. That's right. Because they're hitting it. Now I'm working this this one fly, and it's been been very effective. And it's something, of course, not typical of your lake fishing. I mean, you can use prince nymphs anywhere, but this one is that light bright prince nymph. We were very effective in the Columbia River at Titan purples and pinks and blues and greens every different color and it's really good pattern so I thought I'll try it out and it does it looks like a you know mayfly nymph it can imitate many different uh, many different nymphs in here and I've had really good luck with it and I think mainly it's the color but there are more and more chronomids coming off there oh there we go there we go got him oh that's a nice one well you know what I was going to change to a chronomid but I don't think so because <laughs> this this fly just keeps producing 
And I'm going to show everybody what it looks like as soon as I get this fish in. But this guy, yeah. Whoa, whoa, he's not ready yet. Oh, yeah. And just like you would with a cron mid hookup, you know, they get it right in the right in the top of the lip. Let me just unhook him. Oh, there he goes. There it is. Just It just flicked off. So here's the pattern. And I think everybody saw this on our Columbia River show. I'll just hold him up here for everybody. And there he is there. And it's just got the great colors. You know, I've got it. Uh, this one's the almost the gunmetal gray with green color to it. And it has a prince nymph. So when you're fishing lakes, even rivers, think outside the box. A lot of times we'll use lake patterns in a river and river patterns in a lake. And you never know what's going to work. I mean, again, this imitates a variety of different things. I've got an indicator just pulling it statically through. It could be imitating uh, a coronamid coming emerging. It could be imitating anything, but they're loving it. So it's going back out. I was going to change over to Karani, but I don't think so. Because well, look at all the coronamids flying around. It's crazy right now. We did get him. Oh. Oh. oh, nice air. Yeah, you finally got him. Well, wow, you whacking so this and maybe biting your tail steady there. Yeah, but I've been leaving that. Uh... Oh, only oh, got off. Yeah, see, that's right. why they're just really gentle takes, right? Whoa, nice. Oh. <laughs> Oh, neat to see that. that is awesome. That's a just a nice chrome fish, man. I love the the chromers. They're just hot fish taken in the air. Chrome yeah, fish. Yeah, that, that fly is not coming off. No. I mean, why would I? Just just banging them. Look at that. That's a nice chrome little bullet. Ooh. Pretty lively. Do I risk it <laughs> without the netting if I well I've got lots of this pattern, but still. Oh, he's just Whoa, 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 whoa. No, I think I'm going to have to net it. Oh, no, it's right there. It's right on the, right on the side of the lip. Just get him there, and there he goes. There's my fly. It's getting pretty beat up. But look at the colors, eh? It's got that beautiful kind of bronzy, you know, bronzy uh, green to it. And again, that's a light bright body. This light bright material, I think I've mentioned on the bench before, it's, a, it's just a new material that I tie all my patterns with now. Like I've got a, again, variety of different patterns and it works. It's, I swear by it. It's going back out. I'm not changing. The heck with the chronomids. I'm sticking with this. Wow. Right by the boat. And as you can see, folks, oh, I have a move position. <laughs> I'm just sitting up here, just picking fish off. Oh, it's just fantastic. I love this. All like little clones. Well, you know what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bench right now. And we are going to tie you up a light bright coronamid. But only what we'll do this time is I've tied you up the light bright coronamid with the light bright as a thorax. But actually the body, this whole fly has a body of, of light bright. So why don't we go to the bench and I'll tie you up a light bright bodied coronamid. Because uh, this pattern is imitating that and it's, it's working great. Today on the bench, I want to tie you up the full light bright chronomid. And the reason I call it the full light bright is because it is completely tied with light bright materials. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We'll use a size 12 scud pupa hook for the hook, some 8 aught olive thread to tie with. We'll use a 3 32nd inch hot orange bead for the bead, some bronze peacock light bright for the body, some black ultra wire for the rib and some Firefox Peacock Light Bright for the thorax. So to start the fly off, I put the thread on the hook. Now I've taken a strand of my black wire, and it is very fine ultra wire. And I want to start it right where my thorax is going to end. So I'm, I've got the hook about two thirds up, just uh, you know, half an inch from my bead, and I want to put, start the wire there. 
because I am want a nice even body. So this will even up the body nicely and then just work your way down with the thread and form a nice even body right down to about halfway around the hook shank. Now the ribs tied in, I've taken some of my light bright and I've pulled out about, uh, you know, six or eight strands and it looks a little, a little crazy right now, but I'm going to tie it in right by, right behind the bead, wrap it back and don't worry about any material that kind of splays out on you, that's fine. Wrap your thread all the way to the back and then back up. And what I'm going to do is take some hackle pliers and just spin it a little bit, just to make it nice and, nice and compact. I'm going to pull out any, any pieces that are, you know, just branching out a bit. And then you get a real nice, thin, wound body. And now I'm going to wrap this forward to form the body. And again, keep it nice and thin. Now you'll notice when you tie in the light bright and you actually wind it, a lot of these strands will stick out. And that's what we want. We want to take our scissors after and just go along the fly and just get rid of all those extra strands. Just cut them all until you have a real nice thin tapered body. Now the body's tied in. I'm going to take my, my black wire and I'm going to take uh, probably about five or six turns up the body and just to form a nice rib on the fly. Right up behind the bead and tie off right behind the bead. Now to finish the fly off, I want to put a small thorax on the fly and it's just a little bit different color, a little more sparkle to it with this peacock and I'm just going to take just a, again a small little, small little pinch. Don't take too much, just a real small amount and just dub it onto your thread and again just a couple wraps. You just want a little slightly bigger thorax on this fly just to accentuate it. Now the thorax is tied in and it's pretty even to the size of the small bead on the front. I'm just going to put a whip finish in to finish off the fly right behind the bead. So there it is, the finished full light bright chronomet. This pattern works with a variety of different bead colors and I used to coat it. But then one day I left the coating off and I found that the more bead up it got, the better it fished. Smacked it right by the boat and almost, uh, it's not almost came in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> They're just on it. What was that on? Different color? Yeah, bleach? different seal bugs are looking at all. Oh, yeah, they're just pinching the tail just to see if the little wee guy. But boy, talk about athletic. Thought you were gonna hang one. So you're That's gonna have what I was doing. <laughs> Think I should bring out the bobber? Uh, don't worry about it. It's not the your bobber? style. It's not your style. Oh, oh there we go. There Fish go. on. <laughs> <laughs> it's every cat. Oh. 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 <laughs> that was a nice one. Now there is a good example of why you wear sunglasses. My bobber, my my indicator, my fly, everything came back at 100 miles an hour when that fish shook it and that just boom right off my glasses so again get yourself a good pair of Maui gems like I've got and uh, keep your eyes safe oh yeah oh you gotta love the fresh ones hey the chrome yeah. fish just the best look at how thick he is too he's healthy fish Stay out of the anchor rope. Nice and chubby. Oh, can he get away with the little unhook? <laughs> he did yes, it. Yes, look what he did to the lens. Oh, he I did know, it on hey? purpose. He got us all less. <laughs> <laughs> Here I was trying to be nice to him, didn't net him? And he gets me in less soaked. That oh, guy's yeah. taking That's down. ripping some line. Oh, that feels like a nice fish. Yeah, not just a little guy. Feels like some meat. <laughs> this guy really took a screaming run on me. So I'll talk a little bit about the recommended setup. For this lake, you know, we're in Mini Lake. There are big fish. 
But I like to use a four weight rod here. I mean, uh, four weight, you can get it out there. Quite nice. You know what, I've, I've got a fairly small arbor reel here, a nice little Ross reel, it's an F1. And uh, it holds the four weight line quite nicely. You know, full spool with, uh, you know, 50 yards of backing. Oh, and this is a good fish. So that's about the ideal setup. Dale's got his, he's got a alternating between a full sink and a clear intermediate sink. And of course, I've got my dry line on here. And this is a, this is a nice fish, nice fresh fish. Again, not huge, but wow, did he ever, uh, did he ever eat? You take it. it hard and did he ever rip it? Wow. Oh, took it real hard. There he is. Nice net job, Dale. Yeah, that's that's a nice size fish. That's more like it. You know, nice and chrome. Just uh, right at the top of the lip. There's the, the fly. Let's hold him up. There he is. Just nice. Nice chrome bullet. Oh, he wants to go. And I just let him go. <laughs> that's why I don't like to pick him up much. Well, it slowed down a little bit. Yeah, slowing down now. It's getting towards evening, but a good day. A great day on many. It's probably yeah. been how many years since we've been here? 15 years, At I least think. 15. 15. Yeah. Well, it's most excellent. I want to thank the group here at Douglas Lake Ranch. You know, uh, Brian, Bryce, and Katrina. Great hospitality and, of course, the fantastic food. You know, we had something like prime rib last night. <laughs> we get the hell of it tonight. Just fantastic. And thank the Bulldog. Thanks for coming out and joining me. You know, we're doing a lot of stuff together now. Uh -huh. like you're, you're hanging them up, eh? That's, that's it. Right. That's, that's it. That's it. One month to retirement. Brilliant. He's joining <laughs> the team. So when you come here, take care, conserve our waters, and we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, Head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.